Hey everyone, this is Adam Kelly. This video is part of the Unity Coin Collecting Platformer series. If you haven't been following along, you can find a link to the playlist in the description. Otherwise, open up your project and we will jump back in. Once you have Unity open to your new project, you should see a little sample scene here like this. And the scene is kind of cool looking, but not very useful to us. So we're going to create a new scene, but we want to leave some of this stuff behind and delete a lot of it. So we're going to end up uh, creating a new scene first and then basically cleaning up the stuff that we don't need. So we'll go in scenes. We will right click and create a new scene here, and we'll call this desert. And we can double click it to open it. And once we've double clicked it, we should be able to delete these two things from the old scene. So we'll just shift select both of those and hit delete and confirm. And then we can go back out here and delete a few things that we also don't need. We don't need the readme file. We don't need tutorial info. We don't need example assets, which just contains all of those meshes and things. Um, we'll keep materials, we'll keep presets. We just put something new in scenes, so we want that. And we can delete the scripts uh, folder. So we're deleting example assets, scripts, tutorial info, and readme. And by the way, this is not critical. You don't need to delete these. I just like to uh, clean things up a bit. Now we're going to import some meshes to our project so that we can add them into our game. We're going to right click in the assets folder here. We're going to create a new folder and we will call it meshes. And if you accidentally click away from it before you rename it, you can always just kind of double click on it here slowly and then it should allow you to rename it. So we'll just double click quickly and then that'll enter into the fo the folder. And we will find where we downloaded the FBX models that come as downloads for this course. So I have them all in this FBX folder. I might name it something different when I upload them, but wherever all of these meshes are, um, there's arch and boulders and the cactus character and coin and all these different things, basically. And if you have them open in your Explorer window, you should be able to just click and drag them into the project. Uh, if that's not working for you, you can also right click and import new asset. And then you can find those meshes, do the exact same thing and just click import. So here are some 3D models. And let's just, so that we can look at one, we can click on this and we're going to drag it over here into this folder right here. Or the, not folder, it's into the hierarchy um, right here, this hierarchy tab. Now, also just double check, make sure that it positioned it at zero, 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 and if not, change those to all zeros because sometimes it just makes uh, weird things happen and puts it in a weird place. Now I'm flying over this, and if you're curious to know how to do that, you can right click on this here, and you can then use your W, A, S, and D keys on your keyboard to fly around, kind of like video game controls. You can also use the E key uh, to, to slide down, and uh, the Q key to slide up, so you can kind of fly up and down that way. So this is really helpful for exploring a scene that you have. Um, I will note, I got kind of stuck on this at one point. I accidentally had mine in isomorphic or isometric view. I can't remember which what ISO is short for, but you're gonna get some weird issues if you do it this way. Um, the, the isometric view is really useful in some cases, but not when you're trying to navigate a big scene. It's just not good at all. So. You can just click on that to get back into perspective view if you have that problem. If you're not able to fly around like that for some reason, you can also pan by uh, middle clicking on your mouse 
Um, and then you can also, if you hold down the Alt key and click, um, it'll let you orbit. And then you can scroll with your mouse wheel as well. So those are all different ways you can move around in your scene if you're completely new to Unity. And so we've got this, this cool terrain here. And then there's also some other things, like I'll just pull in a boulder really quick and just place it right here, just kind of drag it into the scene. And um, another little tip here is you can, once you've selected something and it's highlighted in orange, you can hit F and that'll allow you to look at it. And if you're completely new to game development, you might be wondering, where did these come from? How did these get made? Maybe you thought that Unity was where you look, you made these things. Well, unfortunately, no. Um, you don't make 3D meshes inside of Unity most of the time. I think it's possible to, but not a good, great experience. I actually used Blender to make these models, and Blender is a completely different tool that is made by a different company, and uh, it's free to use and really awesome to learn, but it does have its own learning curve. Um, and we've created some learning resources on Immersive Limit for Blender as well. But just know that if you want to make your own 3D models, that's sort of a different uh, discipline. And um, you can absolutely and should learn how to do it. But we won't be covering how to make these assets from scratch in this course. But that's it for this portion. I wanted to just stop right there before I get too out of hand. Um, we'll be back in just a moment to continue with adding a few more things to our scene. Let's make our scene a little more interesting here. As it is right now, it's, you know, it already looks fairly good, but it's maybe not quite as good as it could be. So this asset that was brought in, you'll see that it's kind of shiny, and I don't particularly like it looking that shiny. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go back out to the Assets folder and into the Materials folder. And we're going to create a new material to use on our sand and on our rock. So we'll right click, we will create, and we'll find material in here. And we'll call this sand. And we need to come in here and just change a couple values. We really don't need to get, this looks a little overwhelming if you're looking at the inspector tab here. Um, there's a lot going on, but you don't need to know much about it at this point. This little box right here is the color. And then there's also a smoothness parameter. So if I take this sand material, click and I drag it in here. Now it kind of looks like snow, which is neat, but not what I'm going for at the moment. I'm going to lower the smoothness. So you'll already see right there, if I drag smoothness all the right way down, it, it changes the appearance quite a lot. So we're going from really shiny down to not shiny, basically. Very rough. And then we're going to pick a new color here. And we want to pick something sort of in the yellow, yellowish orange here. And then maybe something kind of like maybe around there. It's really up to your, your preference. There's not like a, there's no exact color here. I think I like that. So if you want to if you want to do something similar to what I'm doing here and get a similar color, you can set your values right here. Um, 36, 36, 100, and then your alpha should be all the way up as well. So this is your hue, saturation, and value, and then your alpha is just like how transparent it is if you had that set up, but we don't want to do that. So you can click X on that. So we have sand. And then we want to create a rock texture as well. So we will create a, sorry, I meant material, not texture. Uh, and we'll call this rock. And we'll apply it to our rock for now, just so we can have something to look at it, see how it looks. Um, we'll create sort of a more reddish looking material, probably. I don't know how dark I want it exactly. Just experiment, that looks okay. So 248276. And then I want to just turn down the roughness. Or sorry, turn down the smoothness to make it rougher. Um, and you can you can play with these colors all you want. I might, let's see. Yeah, I'll make it a little more 
a little more, um, I don't know, lighter brown. Uh, so 24, 68, 79 is what I'm, what I'm working with here. Okay, so we have these materials set up here. And we might as well also pull in a cactus character right now. So I'm going to try and drop him in the scene. But it looks like it ended up below the terrain. So that can happen. And if it does, you can always grab on these guys, these uh, red and um, blue and green to sort of move it around. But it can also be helpful to look over here. So I'm going to actually set this Y value to zero. That's the up and down. And then I might actually just set all three of them to zero here. And then uh, I had it selected, so I'll hit F, and that will allow me to look directly at it. So now we've got a character in the scene as well. Hey, we really hope you're enjoying the course so far. If you are, make sure to check out the rest of our courses on ImmersiveLimit.com. There's other Unity and Blender-related game development stuff that you'll probably be interested in. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.